Hello YouTube, it's Sean from the Pompey Games Room here, back with another review video. So there's been a fair few videos put up recently on my channel with no commentary. As I touched on in my last review video like this, um, I'm just going to upload the gameplay now, I'm not going to talk over it. Um, unless it's a specialist game like uh, First Fault series or uh, games from, uh, titles from my gaming past, I think I've called it. Um, yeah, uh, games that you know I, I know inside out and really, really sort of want to get across how great they are and things like that. So review videos for me now, like I said, they're just going to be gameplay, no commentary. And then every sort of two, three videos I'll do, I'll do a recap video and we'll go into greater detail on the games if that's your bag. If not, um, obviously the games are up uh, with no commentary, it's just the gameplay. Uh, the actual sounds and everything like that, it's all official hardware obviously as you can see behind me. Um, no emulators or anything, so um, yeah, hope that that takes your fancy guys. But if you do want to chat about the games, this is the ideal place. So every few videos I will put up a video basically reviewing the games that are already on the channel. So um, anyway, today we are looking at two Mega Drive games in Bloodshot. One of the coolest Mega Drive box arts of all time. Absolutely love this. Please let me know your favourite box art for any game you've got, but this is pretty close. Um, I'll put a bigger picture in the minute when I hold uh, when I've stopped holding this amazing title as well. Pete Sampras Tennis. There is another one after this, I believe it's Pete Sampras Tennis 96. So yeah, this is like 94 release. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant, brilliant titles. I really, really enjoyed playing this, especially this one. But anyway, let's start off with the um, the first game that was uploaded, and I believe it was Bloodshot. If it wasn't, don't worry. Um, I will link anyway if you want to go see it. But uh, yes, Bloodshot, like I said, one of the coolest box arts you're ever going to see in a game, um, especially a Mega Drive game. And I'll be honest, it's quite impressive. I've got memories of this game when I was a kid. And uh, playing, uh, renting it from Blockbuster Video back in uh, sort of the mid '90s when it was out. When was this out? 1994, five. Uh, yeah, as I look on the back of the case as well, '94, five, something like that. I mean, it was it was pretty impressive for the time for the Mega Drive. Uh, around the time, obviously, we would have been moving towards the um, 32X, which you could get Doom on, uh, which I've recently seen gameplays from John Bundy for. Um, yeah, it looks pretty decent. This game, uh, I will say playing it, remembering how frustrating it was because I don't believe there was a run button on this game. Uh, towards the end of the review, you'll see you get a timer that, that ticks down, which you need to escape the level. Um, and it, it, well, running, unless you know where the secret passages are and stuff like that, it's literally impossible to escape. Um, so yeah, it can be a bit frustrating. I had two goes at it on the actual review and I didn't get anywhere close. But other than that, it's pretty impressive. The sounds are, are pretty um, pretty standard for these sort of maze um, games where you've got to find your way around and try and shoot your way out. The enemies are all sort of predetermined places. They're always in the same place. Um, and they only take usually two to three shots and then they're, um, then they're sort of gone. Uh, the level design is pretty um, pretty basic. I believe that there's only actually, um, I think there's only four or five stages, um, but they all look pretty similar of the maze. So the blue with the um, different colored side and door and the black background. But, you know, impressive to see the Mega Drive sort of throwing this sort of game around on its system and its hardware. Uh, really, really good game. Um, developers for the title were Domark and the publishers were acclaimed. So it's got some big names behind it. Um, Domark at the time had done a few big games that I really enjoyed, such as the Formula One series of games. Um, really, really enjoyed those. But um, yeah, this came out, um, I believe it was reviewed pretty well. Um, <clears throat> it's called, uh, I believe it's Battle Frenzy uh, over in the US. I, I believe it's called Battle Frenzy. If it's not, I'll put a correction below. Um, but uh, yeah, I believe it's had a remake as well. You can you can download some versions of of, um, of uh, Bloodshot on the Xbox and PlayStation Networks and the you know, associated stores and all that. So yeah, you can play the classic still and also um, the rebooted version. I believe there was a rebooted version in 2011, I want to say. But uh, don't quote me on that. I'm just going by uh, stuff I'd found on YouTube when I was there. I'm trying to remember back. I mean, I recorded this review. The gameplay you'll see now, I probably recorded about sort of a, a year ago. So I'm trying to remember back. But um, anyway, uh, one of my big gripes um, was obviously apart from the time where you had to escape, obviously you had to find the, um, the secret doors that would allow you to get back to the exit quick enough. I think you have usually around 60 to 75 seconds to escape any level uh, towards the end. 
Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, it was uh, <laughs> it was really frustrating. Like I said, I had two goes and I failed twice. It's a real sort of button basher. Um, you uh, can literally just keep your hand on the trigger, uh, especially with the boss fight you'll see later on in the actual review. Uh, and you just stand there and have to avoid bullets uh, raining down on you. <laughs> as the um, as the first boss in particular, I never got past. But um, yeah, back in um, sort of the early nineties when we used to uh, rent this from Blockbuster, or it would have been um, it would have been Ritz Video probably about the time. Ritz Video, God, you remember that? Um, yeah, it would have been Ritz Video. We would have rented this over a weekend. And uh, yeah, we would have rented this. And I, I believe my older brother probably would have uh, would have played for a lot easier than I could. These were certainly not my bag. But um, yeah, the impressive box art. And actually, you know, Doom was huge about this time. And um, yeah, it was always good to sort of uh, throw a game on like this. But anyway, there was one other drawback, which I sort of um, I uh, went off on a tangent there. But uh, was the map in the top left-hand corner. The one improvement I think would have been absolutely amazing on this game is if the map actually moved with you when you walked, so it went in the direction that you're travelling. I say that because when you try to escape, you're constantly going down the wrong way because the map doesn't move, the screen's different, you lose orientation, and you, you basically lose where you are on the map. Um, that's what happened pretty much every time I was, <laughs> I was playing this game and trying to escape uh, unsuccessfully. So... Um, yeah, I mean, would I suggest that you buy this game? Um, yeah, I would. If you like Doom, it's a good, good alternative uh, to Doom. Uh, Doom on the 32X looks better. I think it plays a bit smoother as well from gameplay I've seen. I've not played Doom um, on the Mega Drive, um, and I'm not prepared at the moment to buy 32X to do so. Um, <laughs> so, uh, man, I saw how much they're going for nowadays. They're like between four and 600 quid for a box one, good condition. So, um, but uh, yes, uh, so I'm probably not going to pick up Doom anytime soon. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe one day I will. Uh, I've played classic Doom on sort of the um, the earlier versions when it came out originally and really, really enjoyed it. Never very good at it, but really enjoyed it uh, nonetheless. It's actually one of my favourite uh, N64 games. I, I commonly throw that on. I've only got a cartridge only at the moment though, so I've got to upgrade that. But um, yeah, so guys, would I rate you get it? Well, the game, I think it sells between 20 to 40 quid on eBay. Um, even in auctions, it sell, sells like mid 20 pounds, something like that. Um, and yeah, I would. If you enjoy this sort of game series, then you'll really get a kick out of it. And like I said, the box art looks great anyway. Um, also, as a side note, the game is based in 2049. I'm recording this in 2022. That's not far off. Pretty scary stuff coming in our lifetime, guys. But anyway, yeah, so Bloodshot. Probably would give it a go. Um, especially the cart only is like under a 10 quid um, purchase. But yeah, it's pretty good. It's uh, it's only one player. Uh, it's one or two players, sorry. Um, there's, I, I should just read the back. I never got that far, so I was never sort of... Um, I was never sort of that... Uh, uh, sort of au fait with how the game played and stuff like how many levels there were so it's one to two players 12 levels 10 weapons three game options split screen two player options so it must have been like a, a hunt down kill mode in this as well so um yeah so i'll read the synopsis for you superbly smooth 3d graphics and frantic one or two player split screen action as you go through an alien troop carrier containing a deadly cargo of programmed killing machines. Whoa. If there was ever a 90s tagline for a game, um, that's probably it. That and explosion on full motion video. Um, but that wasn't in the description, sorry, I'll carry on. Your weapon includes the surgically inserted Battle Frenzy chip. Okay, it must be called Battle Frenzy in the US, then I might have got that right. Which gives you superb strength, lightning reflexes, and insatiable desire to kill. A condition known as bloodshot. Your partner had better watch your back. So yeah, I mean it's a pretty um it's a pretty good uh, synopsis on the game on the back trying to sell it to you. Probably would have had me back in the day to buy. Um, so yeah, make sure you check out Bloodshot if you can, guys. I think it's a decent title and a good addition to anyone's Mega Drive library. So the next game is an absolute favourite of mine, and that is Pete Sampras Tennis, a Code Masters a Code Masters game. Uh, they just hit the ball out of the park back in uh, the early two thousands. Um, with these games, um, obviously micro machines and everything like that. The animations, even though it's cars, uh, the animations really remind me of uh, micro machines. The smoothness, the, the actual design, the tennis courts look very yeah, similar to yeah, say like something sure. you would see on a micro machines title. And they were absolute legends back in the day. Those titles. So um, it boasts the number one. Um, 
world number one players, UK number one bestseller. Well, that's quite a bold title with reviews of 92% from Sega Mega Drive, 93 from Games World, 94 from Games World Magazine, and 93% and 90% from Mean Machines and Sega Pro, respectively. That's a pretty amazing um, scores there. The only other game that I played before this, tennis wise, would have been Wimbledon on uh, the Mega Drive, and uh, yeah, it was okay, but this was totally different. The, the sprites. Um, much like the early FIFA games where they used to show the, the sort of sprite animation on the back of the case. Um, there was a, a few different shot types you could play. Uh, obviously, you know, um, you could dive for the ball. There was a little bit of speech in there as well from the umpire. And also, you know, the out when the ball goes out. And, um, you know, there was a really, really good um, sort of progression in the tennis game series, I think, with the Sampras game. Um, it was so addictive. I remember in the summer... Uh, summer months, my friends would be off down um, Nosley Road tennis courts in Drayton, Love. close to where I used to live, and uh, technically it's in Cosham actually, Drayton. Um, but uh, yeah, they used to go off there and play tennis all the time, and I would be at home playing on this. So, um, baking hot day, uh, not too dissimilar to how I'm recording this video actually, because it is practically baking in this office at the moment, but uh, anyway. So the premise of this obviously is um, it's a uh, tennis game that you can either play one or two player, Play against your friends, um, doubles, uh, or you can play. Um, I believe you could use a multi tap on this. Yeah, so it's one or two players simultaneously. <laughs> so you could actually play doubles in this um, with your friend and sort of go through a whole season. So you would take in, say, they weren't officially a named events, uh, named events, but you were playing like Australia, okay. US, UK. Um, and usually around the outside of the court, they'd be decorated differently. So um, in Australia, I believe it was like at the time it, it was Australian Open, I believe, is indoors. Um, or it was around this time because it, it always looked like you were playing like a sports hall on this game. <laughs> but um, obviously Wimbledon in the UK, it's got the um, it's got the green surroundings and the upstands and things like that. And um, yeah, a really really cleverly well thought out game. A game that would be so good if they released it on say like mobile devices or on the Switch nowadays. I think this would be great. Um, Pete Sampras, I believe, is the only named officially named player. The rest are sort of plays on, on some of the players that would have been around at the time. Um, one uh, trick for you, there is an auto-serve button on this. I believe it's the A button on the Mega Drive. Um, and, yeah, that really helps you sort of... Uh, it won't ever help you get an ace, but if you press that, it will pretty much guarantee your serve is going to get over the net. Also, playing this game, I actually... I don't want to say completed this game when I was a kid, but I was sufficient enough that I could beat the the best player on the game uh, at the time. I think it was obviously Pete Sampras, but I used to use a mid-range guy. I think he was a German guy I used to use. I can't remember the name of him. Um, but anyway, um, yes, when you start off on this game, if you play against anyone that's sort of mid-range uh, rated on this game, you're going to get absolutely rinsed every time you play. So... Uh, one tip for you, uh, start with the worst, worst rated people on the game, <laughs> play against them, work out how the game mechanics work, because to be honest, it's one of those games that you will be rewarded um, when you actually play through this. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's an absolutely um, brilliant, addictive title. Once you start winning a few games, you won't want to stop. I recorded actually the footage for this around Wimbledon 2021. Uh, so <laughs> it's been on my channel for like a year and I'm just finding a chance to get back and actually review the game but uh, oh man I love this and it makes me realise I really need to get number um, I need to get the number 2 uh, version which is 96 as I touched on earlier um, yes absolutely brilliant game this will cost you probably between 10 and 15 quid um, and it's an absolute brilliant game so if you're buying back Mega Drive games to play with predominantly friends as reminiscence and um sort of go back over in nostalgia and stuff like that Love. this along with the fifa games is definitely up there so guys make sure you seek out a copy of sam Chris tennis um i got this in a bundle uh, as with bloodshot um but yeah like i said this is probably going to cost you about 10 15 quid to get you know it's funny playing this game back now it just it transported me back to the the time obviously this game was current when it came out much like the FIFA games, obviously, you know, you've got a 90s tennis superstar on there. Um, it really takes you back to the time, and that's what I love about retro games. Um, you only have to look at some of the game cases to be transported back. Like I said about that Nosley Road story, which was a local tennis court near us. Um, I just remember that so well. Um, yeah. 
guys, I absolutely love these titles and I'm going to be covering some more. I've got another review coming up for Million Mesia, uh, which is a, um, a racing game on the PlayStation 1, which I did during PlayStation Month. Um, and I've also got uh, Hang Time, Super Hang Time, I think it's called, on the Mega Drive coming up, So, which was an NBA sort of challenger. All that was released pretty much by the same game engine, I think. People that did the same, I think it was Acclaim that released it. But yeah, decent games. But I'll touch on those in future videos, guys. Like I said, the videos have been linked throughout this. They're also in the description below. So if you want to go watch them through without me sort of rabbiting over the top of them, please do. Um, make sure you drop a like and a comment in there as well. That would always be good. Um, and uh, I will see you again for another review video soon or probably a pickup video next, actually. Um, so I will see you in person very, very soon. Until then, thanks for watching. Bye.